The Mendian Honey Eye Falls Lima Sentinel welcomes you to this edition of the Mayor's and Supervisor's Weekly Update, brought to you by... Each week, our community makes history. Each week, you make history. And each week, there's only one source to turn to for the first take on history. You know what that is? Subscribe to the Sentinel right now to discover the history being made in your own backyard. The Mendian Honey Eye Falls Lima Sentinel. More than just your news, it's your history. Welcome, everyone, to today's edition of the Mayor's and Supervisor's Update. I am Chris Carosa, publisher of the Men in Honey Oil Falls Lima Sentinel. And each week, we bring you what's happening in and around the towns and villages we cover. This week, we're going to start off with Eileen Hansen, uh, the mayor of Scottsville. Eileen, how are, everything, how are things going in Scottsville? Now we're doing pretty well. well. We experienced very cold temperatures and wind chill this past week. Um, the forecast seems to indicate at least some warmer temperatures next week. So let's hope so. Uh, but I won't be getting my flip-flops out yet. Uh, moving into February, uh, here are some reminders for the upcoming meetings. The next Village Board meeting is scheduled for Tuesday, February 8th. 2022 at 6 30 p.m. As previously stated, public meetings will require visitors to wear a mask and socially distance. A public hearing for the volunteer firefighter tax exemption will be held at this meeting. On the following Tuesday, February 15th, uh, we will be holding the treasurer's meeting to continue the 22-23 budget workshop. Again, this is a public meeting requiring masks and social distancing. Uh, February 5th, oh, February, I have got the wrong date here. March 15th is also the date of the village general election. The polling place is the senior center in the municipal building from noon till 9 p.m. Remember that local law 8-2021 pursuant to the cannabis law 133 opting out of licensing and establishing uh, retail cannabis dispensaries within the village boundaries is on the ballot. We want to hear whether you want a cannabis retail dispensary in the village, and you can find a summary of this legislation on our website. And finally, at our last board meeting, Deputy Chris Chambry of the Crime Prevention Unit of the Monroe County Sheriff's Office spoke about the National Neighborhood Watch Program. Now, I know a lot of people had brought up the need for a neighborhood watch again, but unfortunately, there were not many residents attending. Now, if the village residents are interested in forming a neighborhood watch, we need community volunteers. If you're interested in volunteering, please contact the village clerk and Hartman at the village office 889-6050 with your contact information or to get more information about the National um, Neighborhood Watch Program and what it involves, check our website. A neighborhood watch is not possible without your help. And that's about it for us and thank you. Have a good week. All right. Thanks, Eileen. Mike, how about the town of Lima? How are we doing there? Well, Chris, uh, it has been cold, but that has not stopped people from being out walking. Uh, not only in the village, but on the streets outside the village. Uh, this is my annual appeal. Please do not dress like the pavement. I know that black is a very good color and it makes everybody look slimmer and svelte and all that. But if you're wearing it while you're out walking on the country roads, it's also quite dangerous. Uh, please wear something bright, reflective, orange, what have you. Uh, along with that, uh, there are some tips for uh, taking your dog out walking with you. Uh, Short-haired dogs, of course, may need a coat. Uh, they may also need boots if their feet are prone to getting hypothermia. It is important to wash your dog's feet when they get home so that they do not lick the salt and other stuff that was put on the roads or sidewalks uh, and ingest it. Uh, keep your dogs on a lead as uh, snowfall can disguise scents that would help them to find their way home if they get loose. 
and they might just wander lost. Uh, keep them off of frozen lakes and ponds and adjust the time that you spend outside, especially in the hideously cold weather. Um, a little bit shorter is, is better for your dog. Along with that, I, the New York State Department of Public Service is having their annual winter outreach. Uh, this education campaign is intended to help consumers manage their monthly electric bills and energy bills uh, while staying warm and safe during the cold weather months. Uh, there are some very inexpensive cost-saving measures you can take to uh, lower your energy bills. And uh, there's also uh, assistance uh, for folks that are on fixed or low incomes. Uh, you can check all of this out at the uh, uh, Department of Public Services website, www.dps.newyork.gov forward slash winter. And lastly, we have an appeal from the New York State Troopers. Uh, the New York State Troopers are having a uh, sort of a once in a lifetime recruitment drive going on and they'll be accepting applications from now until April 10th. Applicants must be a US citizen, have a high school diploma or GED and meet the age requirement. Uh, you can apply at the age of 20 uh, but have not yet reached your 30th birthday. Uh, there are exceptions for those who have uh, exited the military. Uh, for each year of active duty, they will extend the age requirement for a maximum of seven years. Uh, other requirements to be hired, but uh, those additionals uh, are not needed at the time of applying. Uh, examples are uh, vision tests and college credit and, and that. If you would like to apply, the website is www.joinstatepolice, all one word, .ny.gov. And uh, they are uh, looking to increase their ranks and would love to have you. And that's all I've got, Chris. All right. Thanks, Mike. John, the town of Menden, what's cooking there? Hi. Uh, it's great to see everybody again. Just wanted to uh, remind everyone about uh, their, their county and town tax bill. Unfortunately, something that comes around once a year. But uh, uh, there is a detailed explanation of all the details on that bill in uh, the Sentinel issue of January 27th. We also have one in the uh, hall at Town Hall. So if you have any questions about any of the charges on your tax bill, certainly let us know about that. Uh, we closed uh, out the 2021 year from uh, the towns around the, uh, the calendar year. We closed out the 2021 year from uh, the budgetary standpoint. And I can tell you that we feel that we're still in a very good financial condition with the town of Menden. Uh, tax payments can be made in person at Town Hall, or there is a drop box uh, near the uh, West Main Street door. And if you do leave your tax payment in that drop box, we will mail you a receipt. Or you can just put it in the U.S. mail or definitely stop in if you'd like to. The uh, military Memorial and Splash Park will be going up to bid right around the 1st of March. And uh, we're uh, looking forward to getting that process going and hopefully we'll start construction this spring. Uh, Menden Green, which is a project that has been going on since 2005 which is on uh, Route 64, just north of the thruway that is uh, adjacent to uh, the town of Pittsburgh. They will be going before the planning board shortly with a 30 home subdivision. The, uh, the interesting thing about this application is that they want to tie in to the sewers in the town of Pittsburgh. So this would be the first time potentially that sewers could be in the town of Menden outside the village of Honey Eye Falls. So uh, I would remind everybody that uh, that has implications and that sets some precedents. And uh, it's certainly something that, that uh, we all need to think about going forward in the town of Menden. 
There also will be a public hearing on February 14th regarding the volunteer fireman's tax exemption and, and I should say volunteer fireman and ambulance tax exemption. That public hearing will take place on February 14th. And contrary to uh, things I've seen on the news, it is a 10% reduction in their tax assessment if they meet certain qualifications. It is not a 10% decrease in their taxes. So each uh, taxing authority has to adopt this if they would like to proceed. So uh, the town of Menden will consider that on February 14th, and that will be only for the town tax portion of your entire tax bill. And once again, it's only on the assessment for individuals who volunteer and meet the criteria. And uh, recently I was on a Zoom call regarding flooding on the Arundaquite Creek, which we've all seen in the Hamlet Amended. And some of our uh, downstream partners have seen this problem as well from time to time. So between the Army Corps of Engineers and all the other state and agencies, federal agencies, uh, we're all on that call. And so we're hoping that uh, this will lead to some type of flood relief in the future. So we'll be keeping an eye on that as we go. And thanks for having me. Happy All February right. to everybody. Yeah, thanks, John. Finally, we have Rick Milne, Mayor of Honeyoy Falls. How are we doing today? I should also say in supervisor or we're, we're, supervisor, uh, legislator in the Monroe we, County Legislature. So Rick, what's We are on? doing well, Chris, thanks. And it's great to see everyone. Um, you know, I, I do miss Jerry not being here because we usually have a couple of laughs, but I do have to say that, uh, I, and I mean this very sincerely, I, I always appreciate the uh, great public service announcements that Supervisor Falk brings up. Mike uh, does a great job with that, and uh, he's absolutely right, uh, you know, but except that black doesn't always make everybody look better. I mean, I... I just doesn't always work that way. But no, he's absolutely right. And, and Mike, thanks for bringing those things up. Um, you know, in the village, we continue, um, we still continue to uh, work on some cleanup from the uh, snowstorm from actually a, over a week ago now. You know, just, you know, you're always finding another little pile. You're finding uh, uh, some ice buildup that maybe makes it hard for people to walk that we're, we're always going out and trying to clean up. So we continue on with that. Um, we appreciate everybody's patience as far as, um, you know, uh, getting the sidewalks cleaned and, and when people point out an area that maybe didn't get cleaned off uh, as well as they thought should be, we certainly try to address that as best we can. Uh, we also um, are getting into our budget workshop time period, um, so we will be posting those. Um, you know, we're taking every week as it comes as far as uh, are our meetings open? Are they closed? Uh, are, are they just open, but you have to wear a mask? Uh, it's, it's always a, a, a changing process, but as of right now, we're hoping that as our meetings start up again in February, we will be going back to open meetings. Uh, our meeting for the, uh, the, the Village Board of Trustees meeting will be on Tuesday, February 22nd this month, and that's a day late. Um, due to the, the President's Day holiday. So it'll be Tuesday, beginning at 7 p.m. on the 22nd. Um, we also will have a couple of public hearings at that time. We will be talking as Supervisor Moffitt and Mayor Hansen uh, just talked about, we will be talking about the volunteer firefighter and EMS um, property uh, tax uh, discount. And, and John's absolutely right. This is not a discount on the whole tax base. It is your property tax assessment. Um, there's a 10% decrease on that. And uh, to John's point again, um, you have to be an active, at least from the Honeyway Falls standpoint, you have to have had uh, active service in the volunteer fire department for at least two years. And then there is also another um, portion of that, that if someone has served for 20 years or longer, uh, they would also be included, and that would be a lifetime type discount. But again, it's on your property tax assessment. Um, we also will be having a public hearing on our comprehensive plan update. Uh, we hope to get that passed this month. 
Um, again, that is not a comprehensive plan um, total rewrite. There were just some updates and we wanted to make sure that it was again reapproved after you know seven years of active uh, um, of active uh, use, if you will. We wanted to make sure that everything was still in line. So that will be uh, discussed also. Um, the COVID-19 home test kits, uh, that's been talked about quite a bit uh, in, the in, the, in the news. Um, those, that supply to Monroe County has been delayed. Um, so we are still waiting to hear when those, the next load, if you will, of uh, or shipment of COVID home test kits will be available. We are hoping that uh, there will be many of those available to the town of Menden and Village of Honeyway Falls and in our other Monroe County communities. Um, and again, I can only talk about Monroe County at this point in time, but um, we are hoping that those will be available soon and we can hand out more of those to our local residents. Um, lastly, the Wolfsburger Park uh, development continues to move forward. Um, again, phase one has been approved and we are uh, expecting that in early spring, uh, those uh, first initial phase one home sites uh, will go up on the market as far as the property for sale. Um, and we are looking forward to that project moving forward. There's still a big um, ask, if you will, in the Honeyway Falls, Menden, and certainly all of our areas, Lima and Scottsville and Rush, uh, you know, they're, they're great places to move to, and we're looking forward to, uh, to having that um, project move forward. Lastly, um, I'll just say we continue to work with uh, the residents of Seneca, um, Seneca Park, um, uh, where those folks uh, that lost their homes, we, we have a very active group with our local churches, uh, the Love Leads Us group, from Lima, Elam uh, has certainly been involved as well, but our local churches and uh, uh, are all pulling together to try to help these folks in need. And uh, they're all doing fairly well. As a matter of fact, um, as of this recording, I believe there are four of the apartments of the 12 where people are able to move back in, were able to move back in over this weekend. Um, so that is, that is really positive news. Unfortunately, there are still eight apartments that are unusable and will have to be totally rebuilt. Um, and that's gonna take you know, upwards of nine months, we expect. But um, we're working with those families. Conifer is doing a good job trying to work with those families as well. And uh, I'm sure uh, we'll all be hearing more of what is needed for these families moving forward. And, uh, we, we were proud of the ability of this community and our surrounding communities to come and uh, help these families in need. So thank you to all of those who are uh, working with us. Thanks, Chris, I appreciate it. All right, thanks, Rick. Anybody have anything that they forgotten to add that they wanna say? Seeing none, I wanna thank you for again, participating in this week's Mayor and Supervisors Report. And also thank you all for watching and listening to what our mayors and supervisors have to say. Remember, we're on every Sunday at one o'clock on our Facebook page and YouTube channel. And with that, we'll say bye-bye for now. We'll see you next week. Thank you. Imagine yourself communicating with a difference. Pandimensional Solutions helps you do this. Whether live spectator events, taped broadcasts, or real-time audience-engaging programs, you can benefit immediately from the tools Pandimensional Solutions will share with you. Do you want to make a difference? Contact us at pandimensional.com.